ridiculous. You're making and this I don't look believe like you a, think that. You I are, do make, not you are you celebrating. That. You are celebrating, celebrating morbid obesity. I am not celebrating That's what you're morbid doing. obesity. Body positivity and fat acceptance are two different things to me anyways. And I think that the fat acceptance movement has kind of overtaken the body positivity movement. If you're gonna criticize magazines for putting anorexic girls on the cover, which promotes an unhealthy lifestyle, I don't see that this is any different. One main thing whenever it comes to body positivity today is the fact that people overall look at the image rather than actually looking and paying attention to lifestyle and having to actually take care of their body. There is nothing that enrages me more than fat models. <laughs> A regular model, at least she's willing to lose weight so that she can be looked at, but these fat are just like, look at me! You still I deserve to be looked at! Hello everyone, it is me Salem. Welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? I am extremely nervous for today's video because it is on a topic that I've always wanted to talk about but I've always avoided because um, I don't want to get canceled. Because let's be honest, whenever it comes to people expressing a slightly different opinion on popular things, they get dragged to filth on Twitter and I personally do not want to voluntarily uh, put myself through that. But I am going to talk about it anyways because um, because I can so I just want to say this and get this out of the way in this video I will not be talking about how body positivity promotes or glorifies unhealthy living I think it's very extremist thinking and that argument uh, Really has no basis and I think that argument is often used just to body shame and put people down who are part of the body positivity movement These people are trying to spread a message of loving yourself and accepting yourself and guess what bodies are not products so there could be no way of them glorifying or trying to promote um, that unhealthy living. That argument is incredibly lazy and it distracts from the fact that there is actual real criticism in the movement. And like I said, I'm gonna try to be as open and unbiased with this conversation as much as possible. So yeah, if you were expecting me to talk about that, I am not. However, I do think that there is a lot of aspects of this movement that needs to be talked about, dissected, and changed. Body positivity can turn incredibly toxic. I wanna talk about Lizzo and how basically you're forced to fake it till you make it and always be 100% okay and accepting towards you and yourself and that you're basically not allowed to have a bad day. Um, so yeah, I wanna talk about all of that, which is a lot, I know, but I also wanna talk about how there's actually a better approach to all of these problems within this movement. But this conversation has gotten bigger and bigger within time with not only Adele's weight loss, but also Rebel Wilson's weight loss, and then the whole Lizzo cleanse controversy, and also just the topic around Tess Holiday. These are all things that I think uh, definitely have pushed me to want to talk about it a lot more, especially because I am someone who does advocate for body neutrality more than body positivity, but we'll talk about that later. Since we are going to be talking about a lot in this video, it is going to be another long one, so definitely grab your favorite snack, grab some tea, get snuggled up with your favorite fall candle, and of course grab your favorite stuffed animal. And let's talk about how the body positivity movement kinda has gotten less and less positive throughout the years. But before that, you guys know the drill, I have to pay my bills, so here is a word from our sponsor. Thank you to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. I've actually worked with Bright Sellers before and I love them so much and I'm so happy to say that we're collaborating again. For those of you who don't know what Bright Sellers is, you sad, poor thing, you. Bright Cellars is a data-driven wine club that delivers delicious bottles of wine to your door every month or however often you would like. And you can get started just by taking a super fun, quick, and personalized quiz on your favorite flavors, your favorite pastimes, and what you're like so that you can get paired up with the perfect wines. I know for me, I'm very new to this whole wine thing, but after my first try with Bright Cellars, I definitely wanted to keep going, and they sent me all types of new wines that I absolutely love. My favorite so far in this new box is Dead Stars and Black Holes, which I, uh... I already finished, but each bottle comes with a really cool card that describes the flavor and what food and activities to pair with it, which is super cool. And you can try cool new wines now. Just click the link down in the description below and use code Salem for 50% off six bottles plus a bonus bottle. Take the quiz now and let me know what flavors you get. Let's go have some fun.
Obviously, we know that now, today, that the body positivity movement has the goal of spreading the word of how you're worthy of love. At its core, body positivity isn't only about, you know, uh, allowing people to accept themselves and their bodies. It also aims to dismantle judgment against people of color, people of all types of genders and sexualities and disabilities. It also aims to help people understand how social media works and how it contributes to us having a distorted view on how we see our bodies and how popular toxic media messages messages can make us feel negatively about our relationship with exercise, food, clothing, fashion, and self-care, which is all really nice things that I think everyone can truly benefit from. And even though this is the body positivity that we know now, it actually originally started as the fat acceptance movement, which actually started in the late 1960s. The National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance was first established in 1969 and continues to work to change how people talk about weight, but the term body positive emerged in 1996. The body positivity movement in its current form began to emerge around 2012, initially focusing on challenging unrealistic feminine beauty standards. So this is where we start to see the shift from it being the fat acceptance movement to more awareness within the fat acceptance movement and it eventually transforming into the early stage of the body positivity movement which was the all bodies are beautiful campaign message. And very often I find that instead of viewing the body positivity movement as something that has grown from the fat acceptance movement in into what we know now, people will always go back to bash the movement by saying that, oh well the original thing was the fat acceptance, so therefore it is always fat acceptance. That's really not the case at all. While body positivity has become increasingly popular, there is a lot of confusion surrounding the topic. And part of a big reason as to why that is, is because body positivity can mean anything to anyone. It doesn't necessarily have a definition. I mean, it does have like rules and an outline, which is all bodies are beautiful. And depending on who you ask, they all probably have a different definition as to what they think of the body positivity movement. Many times people think that it's great and that they love the fact that there's this message of self-love and acceptance out there. But some people will go back to the fat acceptance movement and talk about how the body positivity movement basically glorifies and promotes obesity, which just isn't true. Even in the fat acceptance movement, it wasn't about accepting the fact that you're unhealthy or obese. Instead, it was about dismantling dismantling the stereotypes and the hurtful way that bigger people are treated every single day and basically saying, hey, I'm human too. Pretty simple, it just means to be able to enjoy the body that you currently have at the state that you're currently in. And in terms of the fat acceptance movement, that current state would be being a bigger person. But as the fat acceptance movement has evolved, the body positive movement has carried on that message and redefined it by saying that you should be able to accept your body in the current state that it is in, no matter where your body is going through. Whether it's your body just naturally aging, whether you just went through an accident and there's a change in your body, or if you've just gone through a pregnancy. And even though the body positivity movement has come a long way since the fat acceptance movement, I really do feel that somewhere along the line, the focus of all bodies are beautiful has definitely gotten <laughs> lost in, you know, the amount of heated debate there is around the topic. There is such a huge focus on that, that the main goal, which was to allow people of different colors, races, disabilities, trans women, trans men, just anyone is worthy to view their bodies as good bodies. That message, which is a very beautiful message, just somehow got completely wiped out of the narrative because people were so obsessed with criticizing only the bigger people who are part of that movement, which honestly kind of sucks because even though the body positivity movement was meant to be forever, everyone the discourse and controversy surrounding bigger people in the body positivity movement was being so heavily focused on that the message just started only focusing on people with that body type and eventually shut out people of other bodies and that is definitely not the fault of the people who were a part of the body positivity movement and were bigger it was honestly unfortunately a result of of people being overly critical and the amount of controversies and discussions just completely overshadowing the entire movement as a whole and the problem that I have with this whole thing that happened is that no one was truly advocating to take back that power for the people who were being overshadowed. And this is why it's important to discuss this because at one point, the message of loving everyone's bodies, everyone's bodies should be on social media, everyone deserves to have their bodies represented, just completely got lost in the mess. The body positivity movement basically grabs the toxic nature of beauty standards that are super unattainable and allows people to grab something that is more more tangible and attainable, which is self-love. However, 
The problem is radical self-love and acceptance are still very hard things. The truth is the body positivity movement is still incredibly superficial. Even though it aims to address all these different types of issues and dismantle the system that surrounds beauty standards, in a way, it still somehow contributes to beauty standards. And it still continues to strengthen the very toxic message that you should be beautiful. When I'm like, I think that there's more to offer than how I look. Why do I have to be beautiful? Can't I just live and have that be the bare minimum? Beauty is so subjective and beauty is very vain. We live in a society that is incredibly obsessed with how people look and we love pretty people no matter how horrible they are. Beauty is considered a necessity to live a good life and the body positivity movement strengthens this message by telling us that we need to love and accept ourselves and convince ourselves that we're beautiful in order to be seen as worthy to ourselves but unfortunately that's a very skewed way of viewing things and it's also very incredibly unrealistic this is actually where the whole toxic body positivity term comes into play toxic body positivity just stems off of toxic positivity in general and toxic positivity refers to the idea of focusing only on the positive aspects of life while rejecting and even dismissing negative emotions despite all of that being part of human nature and even though again this is through good intentions it really creates this bombardment of pressure and basically tells people that they're not allowed to have days where they don't like themselves or they're not allowed to to partake in activities can help you like yourself more because as soon as you step out of the mold of being happy with yourself 24 7 you're immediately labeled as a hypocrite or if you say that you want to try a certain product to improve your skin because you don't like your skin then you're told that all of a sudden you're giving into the patriarchy and you're giving into beauty standards and you're a horrible person for that and that you're basically giving into everything that the body positivity movement is against i am not even like a body positive influencer that's not the main you know focus of my content the main focus of my content is to just have an open conversation on uncomfortable topics or topics that are trending but whenever i have done even anything slightly remotely close to beauty i'm immediately called out for being a hypocrite and it's so annoying and it's so stupid. I've had videos where I dress up and do a bunch of makeup, I do my nails, and I talk about topics such as beauty standards and just trying to have a conversation around that. And people will literally comment that they're not gonna listen to me because how can I talk about a topic of loving yourself if I myself am wearing makeup? These comments get brought up all the time in my videos since when did someone wanting to wear makeup all while spreading a message that bbls can possibly kill you automatically make that message faulty because of them wearing makeup like it's not correlating how is me having a sponsor that i want to share with my followers about just cleaning your skin and doing basic hygiene automatically make me wrong about a topic i did extensive research on this is exactly what i mean by the body positivity movement is so toxic that as soon as you step out of the line of your message you're basically told that you're not worth being a part of that movement anymore everyone is body positive until someone wears makeup everyone is body positive until someone decides to shave everyone's body positive until someone wants to correct something on their face through plastic surgery and it's absolutely ridiculous because at the end of the day your body is your body and you're allowed to do whatever you want with it and you still deserve to be shown respect and be accepted into this movement and not lose your place simply for wanting to do something that makes you feel better i'm a person that's very feminine presenting i love getting my nails done i love getting my lashes done i love makeup that is just how i choose to express myself and i don't think that me expressing myself like that is in any way a contradiction to me also being able to preach how i love my body and how other people should love their body it's absolutely ridiculous to hold people to these impossible standards and to force people into a box if i want to wear makeup if i want to express myself differently the very next day that's my business but unfortunately that's just not how it is the body positivity movement has become very toxic and doesn't allow people to express themselves and the pressure to conform is intense even for the very people who are huge advocates for the body positivity movement kelly devos a writer and advocate of body positivity has openly spoken about body positivity as an advocate and how incomplete complete this movement is. Kelly talks about how the movement focuses way too heavily on feelings and forcing people to feel good towards themselves and not reality. You're basically not allowed to express yourself. Literally the first person that comes to my mind or your mind is Adele. Adele dipped after rolling in the deep and then she came back and lost a bunch of weight and she looks really happy but was immediately and harshly critiqued and bashed for submitting to 
the beauty standards. Like people are really out here combating body shaming with body shaming. Like, can y'all just make it make sense? Another bigger celebrity that has been shamed for changing the way that they look is Rebel Wilson. I've always kind of hated the way people have talked about Rebel Wilson and how she's often portrayed in media and movies. And unfortunately, it is a really huge stereotype with bigger women. They're often portrayed as dumb, lazy, undesirable, unsexy, which obviously stems off of fat phobia. But when they are portrayed as desirable, sexy, then all of a sudden it's making a statement and it's groundbreaking and it's always annoyed me because sensationalizing things that should be normal makes it not normal i've talked about my issues before with people glorifying the existence of celebrities and just how i find it so annoying i made a video a while back on billie eilish and the whole tank top debacle people were saying that her wearing a tank top was a social statement that it was a huge step forward for body positivity how it was the most daring thing that she could have done girl she was just existing she was just walking around wearing a tank top. It's not that deep. But people who use social media sensationalize absolutely everything that a celebrity does. And this can also be applied with women who are of bigger sizes. Them simply existing is taken as like a threat and them simply doing their job like acting or singing is considered radical, which absolutely makes no sense to me. And I've always hated this narrative that I see all the time on TikTok when there's someone that's even remotely conventionally unattractive, people will comment such backhanded compliments of like, normalize this or you're so brave for posting this like excuse me do you guys not see how backhanded that compliment is everyone wants everything to be normalized but as soon as you point it out you're making it seem like it wasn't normal to begin with that there was something wrong with it so much to the point where you had to point it out can people exist on social media without getting their appearances commented on apparently not Apparently not. And even though the body positivity movement wants to dismantle that, it really does strengthen it. Because again, people who put themselves in the body positivity movement atmosphere are not allowed to do anything outside of what is what's considered okay according to the body positivity movement like standards. I think the perfect example of this is Lizzo. And the whole juice cleanse controversy that shouldn't have been a controversy or even a topic of discussion in the first place. If you guys remember a while back, Lizzo made a TikTok and talked about her experience going on a 10-day smoothie detox. Lizzo shared that what she was eating was a part of a diet which included green smoothie apples, peanut butter, vegan protein bars, morning and night supplements, and all of that. In the video, she noted that days 4 or 5 and 6 were the hardest, but she feels amazing and after completing the entire detox, she said it was great to reset her stomach, especially because she has a lot of gastrointestinal issues, and now she feels like she looks and feels great. But for some reason, this sparked a lot of debate online. Like, like an unnecessary amount of debate on Twitter and YouTube. Some people were defending her saying that you guys can never let Lizzo win. You guys bully her for being bigger. And whenever she wants to take care of herself, now you guys are saying that she wants to be skinny. Like she just can't win. Other people were telling Lizzo that she was a hypocrite, that she was betraying everyone that looked up to her for what she stands for. And of course, people telling her that she was a hypocrite for doing something that was against the body positivity movement. It got so big that Lizzo actually made another TikTok um, talking and responding back to these comments and she said that her goal was not to lose weight but to simply take care of herself and she said i did the 10 day smoothie detox and as you know i would normally be so afraid and ashamed to post things like this online because i feel like as a big girl people just expect if you are doing something for health you're doing it for like a dramatic weight loss and that's just not the case and this is what i mean when people just sensationalize everything that bigger people and like celebrities and influencers do. Of course, a lot of this is due to the fact that we live in a world that's incredibly obsessed with weight loss. We have TV shows about it. We have movies dedicated to it. But people have to remember, just because someone's body exists, it doesn't have to be politicized. And taking care of yourself has nothing to do with not being a part of the body positivity movement. However, there are cases where people voluntarily politicize their bodies under the umbrella of the body positivity movement, which isn't necessarily bad, but has and does contribute to more toxic body positivity.
Someone that is very well known for politicizing their body is Tess Holiday. Tess Holiday is an American plus size model, blogger, and makeup artist based in Los Angeles. She's known for the hashtag F Your Beauty Standards campaign on social media. And she also became the first model to be a size 22 when being signed to Milk Modeling Agency in 2015. And at one point was also labeled one of the most influential people on social media by Time Magazine and eventually was on the cover of Cosmopolitan UK. And this sparked a lot of controversy. People talking about how she's ugly, she's unattractive, people body shaming her, people saying that she's glorifying obesity. And not gonna lie, a lot of these criticisms are really stupid and just mean. And a lot of people who were talking about it were incredibly immature in approaching it. But there was also people who were defending her, loving on her, and eventually became huge super fans of her. People were saying that it was a huge step for the body positivity movement and how it was a complete revolution. Many of her followers saw that she was being celebrated and loved because of her body and encouraged them to love theirs and express themselves just as much as she was. And there's obviously nothing wrong with that. But you guys know there's gonna be fans that ruin it for everyone else. I mean, just look at the Hatalia fan base. Nar, because I was obsessed with Hatalia so much when I was in middle school. I cannot believe I cosplayed as Italy for Spirit Day. Um, anyways, a lot of these fans ended up idolizing Tess and basically agreeing with her on absolutely everything she was saying. But Tess says a lot of stuff that is not okay. She's a person who really pushes the narrative of health at every size. And no, not the message of health in every size. The original stance, which was that everyone at no matter what size, you know, whatever color you are, whatever disability your body has, you are allowed to partake in healthy habits, you know, meditate, eat well, and just be overall a healthy person. But her version is the health at every size that says it's okay to be unhealthy. And I know I said in the beginning of this video, I wouldn't be talking about this argument, but please keep in mind, when I say unhealthy, I mean ignoring what your body needs and just overall being a good person with good influence, taking time off to take care of yourself and to not feel guilty for taking care of yourself, which is incredibly toxic. But because Tess Holiday is the poster child of body positivity, she herself has admitted that she feels incredibly pressured to not let her fans down by simply taking care of herself. She said in an article, the amount of people who get thrusted into the limelight and their plus size, they lose weight. And with the more successful they get, the more weight they lose. It's hard because those people don't owe staying fat to anyone. It's their body and what they want to do. But there's also a sense of betrayal that people with bigger bodies feel and it's hard because you're in your head. And there's nothing wrong with not wanting to change your body either. But what is wrong is the intention behind it, which is that she feels pressure to not let her fans down by doing the bare minimum for her health, which literally contributes to the fact that the body positivity movement doesn't allow people to change. The body positivity movement makes it so the only way that you can continue receiving love and support is to stay the same, to remain stagnant, to not change because as soon as you change you are automatically cut off from receiving that support and love of that community and this is actually something that a lot of women have been open about on youtube before they talk about how they got a health scare and then they immediately started going into a health kick and they got kicked out of many of their groups because they were being called hypocrites when it comes to tess holiday and the people who politicize their body in a way it's not necessarily bad but it is bad when you start ignoring the reality that comes with being in a position of power and influence. Body positivity is a very surface level movement and having these affirmations of that you are truly beautiful no matter what people say, but these affirmations and these conversations still put emphasis on how it's important and how you look, that how you look has value, which honestly makes sense as to why the body positivity movement isn't for everyone. The body positivity has gotten such a bad rap that there are now influencers and celebrities who are actually going against the body positivity movement and going towards something else, not entirely shutting down the conversation but using it to create a different perspective and encouraging people to love themselves in a completely different way.
People that immediately come to mind is Taylor Swift and Jamila Jamel. Instead of body positivity, which encourages phrases like, I love how I look no matter what you think, they believe in phrases that are more like, I love that I'm able to think, and who cares what I look like? And this actually stems off of something called body neutrality. Body neutrality means taking a neutral perspective towards your body, meaning that you do not have to cultivate love for your body or feel that you have to love your body every day because you may not always love your body, but you can still live happily and appreciate everything your body can do for you. Body neutrality stresses a lack of attachment to how exactly your body looks at any one moment and discourages time spent threatening about your physical self. This phrase has been used since around 2015, but in 2018, Jamila Jamil made an Instagram account called I Weigh. So instead of the body positivity test holidays hashtag, which is F your beauty standards, Jamila went about it in a way where women were posting pictures of themselves and would put hashtag I weigh and had them talk about things that they value in their life and how they value themselves as a person. Jamila has actually been incredibly open in being against the body positivity movement, although she says that she benefits from some privilege and that the body positivity movement can bring awareness to how bigger people are treated in America. She also says that body neutrality can allow people to just not focus on their bodies altogether, but instead can try to find confidence in things outside of their looks, which can be just as powerful. And there is a huge misconception that body positivity and body neutrality cannot coexist because people think that body neutrality means that it discourages confidence in yourself, which is also not the case. The whole point of body neutrality is that it helps to detach your self-worth from the perception of your appearance. Body positivity, although had really nice intentions and messages and aims, somewhere along the line, it did get corrupted. The body positivity movement can make people obsess over their appearance to the point where they forget that there are other aspects of you that are far more interesting and than how you look. Even though body neutrality was kind of made to negate the body positivity movement, I do believe that both of these can be practiced simultaneously. Of course, if one works better than the other for you, um, go ahead and stick to just one. But I truly believe that both can and do have really good aspects that, again, can be simultaneously practiced. Body positivity promotes strong self-esteem. It also encourages people to love their body and it also encourages others to care for their body and to not be so mean to it. Body neutrality emphasizes what your body can do. It also encourages mindfulness, to look at your body as a vessel rather than what it looks like. So when you mix these two, it almost gives you this recipe of accepting your body how it looks now but also accepting that your body can change whenever and that that's okay and to find value outside of that when you do feel dissatisfied with how you look. I personally am no stranger to talking about body issues. I have opened up before in the past that I have severe body dysmorphia, but I remember talking in that video of how something that has helped me is finding my worth outside of the realm of my body. I'm just not a person that can fake um, being happy with myself. When I do feel emotions, I just really go into them. I don't like pretending that I'm okay and I don't like pretending that I'm not allowed to have emotions and really feel them and go through them. So in my experience, body positivity has not helped me at all. But instead, things that have helped me in my journey with self-acceptance and being okay with my body has always been to focus on things that are outside of me. I am a person who's very overly critical about myself, how I look and what I do. But I always have to constantly remind myself that how I look does not tie into my value. I've said this before in a video before, I don't remember which one, but I've also said it when I had an interview with Curology. And I say it all the time to people in my life, but it's so true. And that is your confidence should come from the bare minimum. No, like literally the bare minimum. It's really weird and hard to practice those things because we're taught that like the bare minimum are things that are just like, oh, who cares? Like you just have to do that to do it. We're taught not to find value in the small things, but the way that I've viewed it is that if we start to value and truly appreciate the small things that we can do for ourselves, we can eventually cultivate a confidence and appreciation for ourselves when we're at our lowest because you're always meeting the small standards no matter how horrible you feel to me my bare minimum is the fact that ah, i am breathing and i am alive and i am able to like sleep and stuff and drink water every now and then good job and for me it sounds silly to say out loud but it has helped me a lot but also being open and honest with yourself where are you in your journey of self-acceptance and self-love if it is not your time to self-heal I do not recommend forcing yourself to heal because it's just not going to work. Really truly spend time 
with yourself and also start figuring out what makes you feel valued what outside of the realm of your body or relationships help you connect truly with yourself for me i've always valued the fact that i'm incredibly artistic i can draw i can paint i can make music and that is something that i truly appreciate and have always loved about myself and i find a lot of confidence in the fact that i'm very good at it and when i focus more on that i think about wow my hands can create that and i love my hands and my hands are attached to my body i would never talk bad about my art so why would i talk bad about my body i think one thing that i really don't like about the whole body positivity movement is that it's incredibly surface leveled and when i say that it's incredibly surface leveled what comes to my mind is just the interactions that we have with people on a daily basis if you take a selfie with your friend and your friend looks at the photo and says god i look so ugly in this photo obviously the way that we are taught by society to respond is to say no you look beautiful and to me i've always hated that type of response because it's very <laughs> why are you sad you're beautiful it's like um for me it's definitely a very huge band-aid solution when instead body neutrality not only can it transform our relationship with ourselves but also how we approach other people instead of giving compliments of don't be sad you're beautiful and giving genuine compliments like i think you're a great person or i appreciate this about you or thank you so much for being my friend it really gives value to the inner core being of who we are and those are the type of compliments that truly last forever again if the body positivity movement is something that helps you go for it if you feel like body neutrality is something that's better for you then go for it and the biggest reason as to why i made this video is to spread awareness on body neutrality or how you can use both to really help yourself because unfortunately i do feel like the body positivity at this moment in time has just been it it just it's just not working it's just not working all right but i want you to take away from this video that there are different options for your journey sometimes it feels incredibly hopeless but there is hope and if it helps at all i think that you're an amazing person <sighs> that got real deep at the end but thank you guys so much for watching if you watched the entire video if you made it to the end please comment a duck emoji down in the comments below to let me know that you watched everything also in the comments please let me know what you think of the body positivity movement if you've heard of body neutrality before if you haven't how you practice in your daily life how you want to start practicing it in your daily life did your opinion change after watching this video let me know because i want to know make sure you also like and subscribe <laughs> or or not no one's forcing you make sure you follow me on my instagram also i make music so follow me on soundcloud the most important thing i want you to do today is to do something that you love call someone up and let them know that you love them try something new go watch the new iCarly reboot i don't know just make sure that this day counts i hope you guys all have a very lovely day thank you so much again for watching and i will see you in the next video